Hi, I'm Stephen of Alberta UrbanGarden.ca. On a recent trip to visit family, I spoke to my grandparents in different capacities about their gardens. What struck me was the value of their knowledge and methods, often handed down to them from their grandparents, and now from them to me. This knowledge is invaluable, as in recent generations, gardening has been dominated by methods that are not organic and generally centered around products that are available in stores. So why are we relearning this valuable information? Following the First and Second World War, there was an agricultural revolution with the introduction of synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, and mechanical advancements. These advances led to large-scale agricultural techniques we see all over the world being applied to home gardens. Unfortunately, organic gardening continued to suffer. Following the Second World War, there was just a general decline in the interest of backyard gardening in North America. In conjunction with these new methods, promising higher yields with less effort. Fortunately today, organic gardening is seeing a resurgence of popularity. And now we get to relearn some of the traditional gardening knowledge and methods. I feel the most interesting thing I took away from the conversations with my grandparents is not just the methods and practices, but their approach to gardening as a whole. I found that I'm drawn to the concept of treating the entire gardening experience as one big experiment with lots of trial and error, and using what's available to me to grow more food. So today, I thought I'd go through this concept and how I implement it in my garden. As a scientist, the first thing that I try to do is to set up an experiment at home. Generally speaking, if you're setting up an experiment at home, this falls under the category of citizen science. Citizen science is a very powerful tool for evaluating garden practices, methods, and products. Experiments like the rock dust and biochar home garden field trials were set up to provide evidence to support or refute product claims. Through the use of the scientific method, supported by study design and lab results, we are generating results that we can apply to these claims. Now, citizen science does have its limitations. Often the sample size is too small to pass, say, the peer review required to publish the results in a journal. It is important to state and understand the limitations of the results being presented. Science is an ever-evolving, self-correcting beast, and we will continue to work further to understand the world around us. On a small scale, I will often try new methods, such as the use of leaf and wood chip mulch in a small area of my garden, while continuing my old methods in the remainder. If the method proves harmful, then you only have a small area of damage. However, for the practice of mulch, I was very pleased with the results and started using it in the remainder of my garden. Later on, I would use citizen science and research to further investigate the method and to put together a compelling argument for the practice. Sometimes simply researching an issue has resulted in me abandoning a practice. For example, one year I had a really good tomato harvest after years of failure. It also happened to be the first year that I had used Epsom salt in the garden as recommended by many online sources. So I associated the success with Epsom salt instead of the warm spring, good soil, and many other factors that all contribute to a successful season. As I found out this spring, the practice in most situations does not add any benefit, and my good tomato harvest that year was likely due to other factors. By taking a critical eye and doing a little research, I was able to find more than enough research and evidence to refute any of these claims. When my grandparents were learning to garden, they used their resourcefulness to learn or were taught which free and local resources could be used to feed and fertilize their gardens. As a part of my testing garden assumption series, I have taken some of the practices recommended to me by my grandparents and will use the tools we've just spoken about to put them to the test along with and head to head against products and their claims. My hope is that you're able to take the evidence generated by myself and others in the YouTube community to have the best possible results in your garden. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it very much and I hope you have a fantastic day.